Hello Quilt Artisans, my name is Shonda and welcome to my channel Under the Needle. Now it was not my intent to make two videos today. It was not, it was not, it was not. But since I had to refilm my Sew so Sampler unboxing, here we are. Still looking a mess, haven't combed my hair, What else? So uh, today I want to talk about the Book Nook pattern. So Book Nook was a new pattern release by Pen and Paper Patterns. Say that 10 times fast. So Pen and Paper Patterns wrote Sparrows, um, that cute little Sparrows quilt pattern um, that I know people have seen and love, um, that I, I did one block of a couple of years ago. Um, and they also did a pattern called Dog Pile last year that I really liked and thought was super cute. So I had purchased that pattern and I did a sew along um, with Pen and Paper Pattern. Well, not, you know, they don't know me. I sewed along, right? <laughs> I sewed along uh, last year with Dogpile. And then this year, um, in January, they released a pattern called Book Nook. And I thought it was super cute. Just so cute. Look at that. And so they released the sew along. It was going to be six weeks. Six weeks. Um, I had it just go... Week six, we throw three, we, we do the rows. Week five was a catch up week. Week four, we made. Okay, so yeah, so week one, we made half of these, uh, these blocks here. Let's see if I can show you better. Okay, let's. Flip the camera. So these are the two blocks. So the first week we made half of these blocks that we needed. The second week we made the other half. Week three, we made half of these blocks we needed. Week four, we made the other half. Week five was a catch up week. And week, week six, which is this week. So this is the last day of week six. This is the last day to technically have your quilt top completed on time. And so this week was put your quilt top together week, right? So uh, it was great. I did not quite follow along because for me, if y'all are familiar with pen and paper patterns, then y'all know that there be a lot of pieces. So, you know, to give you an idea, that's a lot of pieces, right? <laughs> that's a lot of pieces. Um, and that's just some of them. So for me, I made all the blocks at one time. So for instance, um, making making this block here. Uh, let's see if I can have a better, let me get my quote. Let me just show you the quilt and then we can talk about it. Make sure I have it oriented the correct way. This. So this is our quilt top. Try to get it all in there. Hard to get it all in there. Let's see if I can move that further. It's a little better. So this is the quilt. So I'm hoping you can see that. Um, so, okay. Let's, let's dissect this quilt a little bit. Okay. So, looking at this block, okay, there's a piece here. So let's get closer.
Okay, let's get that where we can see it really good. Let's get these scraps out of the way. Okay. Is the whole the whole block still isn't in there. Can't get the whole block in there. Let's raise up a little bit. Almost. There we go. Okay. So, this block. <laughs> you see there's a there's this white piece here which of course you can see. You can see this little piece here in the corner. You can see this little piece here. This strip up here. You can see that there's a rectangle here. And this is a pieced unit, so there's a piece on either side here. There's a, a rectangle here, a rectangle here, and this rectangle. So for me, it was easier just to build all 12 blocks at the same time. So rather than do six and six, which is what the quilt along called for, it was easier for me to just do all 12 at the same time, one piece at a time. Um, so let's say, you know, let's say the first thing you do is add this this corner here to this rectangle. Then I would just do that all for all 12. I would do that tw this this one little piece 12 times for all 12 blocks. Then I would press it, square it if I needed to square it. Then I would add this piece, press it, square it. And then I would add this piece for all 12 blocks, press it, square it. Then add this piece for all 12 blocks, press it, square it. And keeping it assembly line like that just made it go, made the blocks go faster rather than breaking it up and trying to do six and six. And the same concept for this block here. I did not do, there's 13 of these. I didn't do six one week and seven the other week. I just... It was just easier for me to chain piece all the blocks. So I I built these first, right? So I would just take these white pieces and then, and there's 13 of these blocks and there's four in each block. So 13 times four. And I would just add this one little snowballed corner on all of those. What's 13 times four? I don't know offhand. <laughs> Let's see, what is it? 13 times 4. So 52 times. So 52 times I just added one little square, snowballed one little corner, 52 times. And then I snowed the next, snowballed the next corner, 52 times. And then I added the next a strip. I mean, um, yeah, 52 times. And then added the next strip, 52 times. And that's what I did <laughs> um, until I got them all done. That was just easier for me it was just more productive for me but that's really it this it's not these are not difficult blocks this it was not difficult it was um it went together really easily the only thing I would say is that I did make sure that I did starch my fabric really well um just because I was dealing with one and a half inch pieces and when I'm dealing with one and a half inch pieces I just want to watch you stretch um and everything went together really well now there's a couple of ways um, to do this pattern. Um, the original pattern designer did it in solids. M she does most of her quilts in solids. She's a lot of people love solids. I'm not one of them. But um, her quilt is all done in solids. And so she gives you instructions on how to make the quilt using solids. So if you did solids, you would only have four colors for these books. So if you wanted a really more like monochromatic look, to match your, like if you have a, a study or a, a living room or a, a room that you like to read in, whatever room that is for you, and you want it to make a quilt like this and you want it the quilt to match that room, you could really scale down your colors um, and make that and make something work more with your, be, be a bit more monochromatic. Because of course you could make this all in different shades of blue, right? You could get all just different, I use 12 different fat quarters. So you could get 12 different shades of blue in your fat quarters. Or if you wanted to do, if your home was, say, 
I don't know. Let's just let's just say blue and green for argument's sake. You could have six different shades of blue and six different shades of green and have it all in this quilt or something like that. So a lot of different options. I just did not want to work with solids. So I used 12 fat quarters instead of four um, three-quarter yard cuts. So you could use four colors, each three-quarters of a yard, or you could choose to use 12 fat quarters. I chose to use 12 fat quarters because I just thought that would be kind of nice. I like color and variety. I chose to go with this grunge. I don't remember what this grunge is called because I already owned it. This is something that I, I didn't buy this grunge for this project. I already had it, so I don't remember which grunge this was. But I thought that this gray would just play, um, you know, really nice, be a really nice neutral with all of these um, colors. And I just, I, just, uh, I just love how bright it is and cheerful it is. And I like that the background doesn't take away from the quilt. Now, let's see, do I have any more tips about this pattern? So I know I'm gonna do a pieced back. Um, this is the backing that I bought. I did buy this. It was, I think I had it in my last haul. It was like $6.80 a yard. So very economical here. I bought three yards and I'm going to be using my scraps to uh, do some type of pieced back to put with this. And this is one of the prints in the line. So this print is in my quilt. And so I do have some, you know, quite a bit of scraps left over. Um, so these are some small pieces here. Um, I did have, um, you know, some, some, some strip. I, did, I had some miscuts, you know, where I, I didn't cut properly because I wasn't paying attention. And um, that's why, you know, my scraps are some different shaped. And then also, um, when you are using the fat quarters, because it's an odd number of blocks, like it doesn't divide evenly. You have um, 52, no, it was 13 blocks. You have 13 blocks, but you have 12 fat quarters. So, you know, some you get, you use a little bit, some fat quarters get used a little bit more than others. Um, but yeah, so pretty, pretty good. I have not yet figured out how I'm going to cut this and how I'm going to piece the back. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, so I'm working on that, working on that. Um, see if I have any, I do recommend starching cause you are working with one and a half inch piecing. And like I said, I do recommend the chain piecing. Like I talked about, that was very helpful to me to get this done. Because you figured we had six weeks to do this, right? The six weeks. Now, I did my, and that's just the sewing. Because so the cutting is already supposed to be done. So when you start week one, your cutting is already done. You're supposed to be already done cutting. So I did all the sewing, got this together in six weeks. And in that time, I completely cut out, I, cu I completely cut out another quilt. Um, sorry, not two quilts. In, the, in that same six, six weeks. I completely cut out two other quilts, completely cut out, ready to sew. Uh, one of those quilts, I've sewn some of the blocks, and then I have another quilt that is partially cut. I've done the rough cutting, now I need to do the subcuts. So in addition to this quilt, I did all of that as well and still spent time with my family. So this was, um, to me, this block was much faster than the sparrows block that sparrows block took some time to put together but then again i was also putting together one block so for that sparrows quilt i would definitely say if you're going to do it somebody was asking me about it in the comments that if you're going to do that quilt definitely chain piece every block let's see any other comments or suggestions about this mm. Okay, so she does indicate um, like pressing. And one thing I like about pen and paper patterns is that they don't insist that everything is pressed open. Usually when they tell you to press something open, it's because it's gonna make your life easier. Um, but it's not like, 
you know, one of those ones where it's like, press all seams open. And then you look at the quilt and you're like, why am I doing that? Like, there's not even any matching seams. So why am I pressing all these open? So you can see here on these book blocks, all of these seams are pressed open, right? Because there's just, there's just too much going on. But when you snowball these corners here, these are just, these seams are pressed to one side. So not everything is pressed open, which is great. Um, you can see the sashing is pressed. Oops, I just knocked over my mic. Um, the sashing is pressed to the sashing. Um, so that's another thing that made it quick is that not everything is pressed open. Let's see, any other tips or tricks about this quilt? No, that's really it. I mean, it really went together easily. I did do some squaring up along the way, right? So, because I, I needed to know where I was. So, like, um, when I would put this little piece together, right, I would go ahead and square. I know what that finished size is supposed to be. So, I would just go ahead and square that up, right? Um, when I would build these units here, these units, these, like, long units here, and these here, so after I would build that unit, I would go ahead and get my ruler out and trim it up and square it up and, and get it nice and even. So I took some time. I took some time with this quilt and still got it done in the six weeks. Um, yeah, I like this pattern. I really do. Um, you guys can check out the uh, book nook pattern by Pen and Paper Patterns. Um, when I get this puppy quilted when I get the back piece then I get it quilted I guess um I'll show you guys the finished project um but right now I'm just happy to have the whole thing pieced together like I literally just got it done like two hours ago no maybe a little more than that but it was about it was about two o'clock but two o'clock and now it's almost six so yeah really really pleased I got it posted on Instagram super excited so now um now to figure out what to do for the back. I mean, I'm not trying to do that today because I don't want to do all that thinking today. But um, I might tonight, well, probably not tonight, I have plans. But maybe tomorrow, maybe draw some pictures, do some math, figure out how exactly I want to put this back together. But right now, I'm just celebrating that the front is done. So um that's it for me let me guys let me, let me know what you guys think let me know if you've purchased this pattern if you tried it if you were afraid to try it um you know it seems a little intimidating when you look at it but it really wasn't um and they gave you labels as well so of course I don't have the sheet of labels because I used them and cut them up and used them for my quilt um here's one on the floor over here so they give you labels for all of the pieces, which was nice because I was able to completely cut everything out and label everything nicely. So I, I did not lose any pieces. I did not lose track of any pieces. Really, really appreciate that. And there is a bonus block in here. Um, let me show you guys. Bonus block. So this is the bonus block here. It's an open book. Jesus, I did not, I did not make that. I did not make that block. Let's see if I can show it to you close up. Kind of hard. Kind of hard to show it. Oh, maybe this. It's a little, little bit. So this, this, this right here. So I haven't decided if I'm going to make one of those yet and piece it into the back. It's a consideration. It's something I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about if I want to do some type of piece back where I do one of those blocks. But that's going to be part of the math I have to figure out. So that's a different day project. But for now, uh, that's it for me. And I'll see you guys next video.